This anime begins with Suzuki, also known as Sato, who is a 29-year-old programmer who works developing games and is rushing to catch the train to get to the office. It's another weekend he'll have to spend working. However, things end up turning upside down when he decides to take a nap after working day and night and fixing unlimited bugs in his game. He slept saying that sleeping was his only freedom. However, when he opened his eyes, they were dry in a totally different place. At first he thought it was all a dream, but it wasn't. Later, he also discovered that he is now a 15-year-old teenager. However, before Sato can fully understand understand his situation, an army of lizard men launches an attack against him. To defend himself without yet understanding 100% of his powers, he casts a powerful spell in retaliation against the creatures. With that, Sato eliminates them completely using his special powers. After that, its level increased, reaching up to 310, which effectively maximizes your stats. Now, as a high-level adventurer armed with a multitude of skills, and without knowing any way that can take him back home, now Sato has to live in this world that looks more like an RPG game. After defeating the captain of the lizard men and winning the title of conqueror of the valley of dragons sato still believes that all of this is a dream and while he was sitting in the mountains he was finding a way out of the game it was then that he discovered his new magical abilities he starts using the meteor shower in a distant place turns out he didn't use it far enough away now he has to get out of there running or he will be eliminated by his own attack either way he was still alive and because of the high risks of the meteor shower sato then decided to disable this attack later he put on new clothes drank some water and took a shower after being alone in that world for some time Sato finally sees a group of people fighting a dragon. The level of these people was low and they were all having a hard time against the creature. Realizing this, Sato jumped onto the battlefield to save a girl. And he soon took her to a safe place. The girl then thanked him for saving her life and then the two introduced themselves. Out of nowhere, completely out of nowhere, two girls appeared and attacked a protagonist. That's because they thought he had kidnapped their friend. Fortunately, the girl named Xena acted quickly and said that Sato had actually saved her. After that, they talk a little and the unprepared Sato then discovers a path to follow. That s because the girls tell him about the city early on, which is nearby. He then goes to the city and looks for a place to sleep. He says goodbye to Xena and her friends and later he fills out the paperwork and gets a visa to stay in the city for 10 days. Sato reserved a place for his stay and learned about the demon lord from the innkeeper. After eating, Sato and Marta go to Avenida Tepeda look for some items. Normal things like clothes, for example. When he is at the market, Sato meets two demo mans and saves them from suffering bullying. Sato then buys Marta some hairpins as a thank you gift. So, after a sweet day in the city, the two Two return home together. Sato then ate a delicious lunch recommended by Marta. But when he went to sleep, he realized he was eating too much. Later, Xena meets Sato again and tells him that she wasn't going to work that day. So she wants to show him the beauty of that city. Sato smiles and agrees to go with her. After buying some sweets, the two sit in front of the fountain and begin to enjoy the food. This almost feels like a date I've never had. After that, Xena showed everything to Sato when they ate almost every type of food. Then, Xena takes Sato to a church where she tells him about a sacred sword that glows blue. Legend says that the person who manages to possess that sword will be a hero. It seems that King Arthur's sword is a canonical effect in anime. There's no way around it. Next, they meet a girl named Orna, who is a priestess who serves a goddess named Perian. Orna thinks of Sato and Xena as a couple, and she makes a cute joke about it that leaves them both embarrassed. The priestess remained with them for a while, until she had an emergency and had to rush out. And meanwhile, Xena continued to show the city to the protagonist. During the pleasant walk, Sato sees something terrible that makes him really sad. He sees people throwing rocks at Demianos. People did this because they judged them as if they were demons. In the minds of those people, hitting them was as if it were God's will. Upon seeing that, Xena jumped in front of them to stop people from continuing to attack them. Diemian Master and his husband in front of the people who were throwing stones at them. Suddenly, completely, suddenly, a demon came out of the accused body and attacked everyone. While Sato was trying to free the demonians, the fugitive demon did something and trapped everyone in his master's cave. He is now trapped inside a cave and must complete the mission to escape that maze. It's exactly like an RPG. Soon, Sato becomes the new master of the Damians and gives them names, in addition to food, water, and clean clothes. From that moment on, the protagonist has his group made up of these three girls called Lisa, Posh, and Tama. As they progress, Sato notices that Lisa, Posh, and Tama are not gaining any XP. That's not even that strange, because after all, they basically just do what Sato says. Until now, they were doing everything they could to protect them. However, to fix this, he starts ordering them to help him defeat huge insects. All know that Sato can defeat these creatures. However, he was doing that to make his Nakamas stronger. Thanks to Sato's training, the girls' level eventually increases, especially after they manage to defeat the insects together, for some food, and he orders them to take a three-hour nap. The curious thing is that these girls were increasingly devoted to Sato. This only grew as he taught them skills. When they wake up after walking a little and having destroyed several monsters, suddenly a creature appears there that is a level 40 undead beast. Sato is the only one who has enough power to defeat her, and he does this without difficulty, after all he is at level 310. After defeating the creature, he saved a few more people and gave orders to Lisa, Tama, and Posh.
Hirosh. Meanwhile, Sato meets Zena again and he rescues her once again. We soon see a group of soldiers who had found a treasure chest. When they opened it, the demon that trapped them all in the cave came out. Everyone tried to defeat him in vain. On top of that, that demon summoned the demon lord, his master. Now, once again, the only person who can save everyone is Sato. That's exactly what he does. With frightening ease, Sato appears and cuts the demon lord with his sword and saves everyone. After that, Lisa, Tama and Posh become Sato's official slaves and now everything is perfect for him. Then, two girls are presented to Sato as slaves, one of whom is called Arisa and the other is called Lulu. At this point, Sato is confused about whether he should really keep them as his slaves or not. After thinking for a while, he decides to sign a contract and keeps the girls as his servants. Now, Sato, who was previously wandering around alone, now simply has five servants at his disposal. After briefly introducing themselves to the other, they all return together to the inn where Sato had a reservation. During the way back, Sato realized that everything his harem was hungry, and he, like a good master, bought delicious food for everyone. As if that wasn't enough, he also bought dresses for the girls. Afterwards, they went to the inn, where Sato arranged a room for Lisa and Tama, while he slept with Arisa and Lulu. Something strange happens during the night, because Arisa wakes him up by trying to kiss him. He felt that something was wrong with her and soon discovered that she was using her powers to try to gain special affection from her master. However, Sato was really uncomfortable with that, a little scared and ordered her to stop. Then, later, Arisa reveals that she wants to serve Sato and that she has fallen in love with him. And then she gave him all the information she had about someone who was summoned with the hero. So, after a good chat, the two end up falling asleep. Afterwards, we see that Zena is going to meet Sato, and she gets furious when she finds him sleeping with Arisa. Sato rushed to her to clear up the misunderstanding. Then, when things finally cooled down, Sato gave some money to his servants and ordered them to go to the market and buy whatever they wanted. In fact, I don't think you can even call these girls servants, right? They have more of a madam's life than anything else. So, Sato, together with Zena, is now looking for a property so that everyone can live together in the same place. After looking for some houses, Sato didn't find any and decided to visit the market with Zena. And as they walk through the market, Sato's servants soon appear, and they show him all the new clothes they had just bought. Sato then liked an earring for Zena and bought it. After that, they went together to the hall to watch a play. The play was so unbearable that not even the characters could watch it. Therefore, after it finally ends, Zena says goodbye to Sato and goes to heal her injured companions. Suddenly, a group of flying ants appears, and they start attacking the people of the city. Paksa and Tama protected the inn while Sato and Liza guarded the main gate along with many others. The flying ant storm finally ends. Sato, along with her maidservants, is now once again enjoying an excellent meal. However, the mystery was just beginning there, as soon Sato was attacked by a mysterious shadow on the way back home. It's okay that he had taken more than he should and wasn't even able to walk properly. But anyway, what was that mysterious shadow? Shortly after, Sato encounters a girl and a rat knight. They are both injured and so Sato takes them to a place where they can be treated. They go to some kind of pharmacy and the store owner quickly identifies the princess. After that she lends her a bed so she can sleep. It is then revealed that the girl's name was Mia and that she was just a 130-year-old princess. Appearances really can be deceiving. After taking them there, Sato returns to Orisa and gives Lulu medicine. After dealing with Lulu, Sato then goes back to check on Mia. However, when he gets there, she is still sleeping. While Sato and Nadi were talking, Mia woke up and Sato immediately ran to see her. Next, Sato is in a hurry to leave to sort out some things. At that moment, Nadi then offered Sato a carriage to facilitate his journey. With a small detail, offering in this case means wanting to sell. Sato immediately buys the carriage and asks Lulu to teach him how to ride it. Therefore, Lulu and Sato leave in the carriage. It was then that Sato realized that they were being chased. Sato looked up at a tree and found an owl looking at Anne. He finds it very strange, so he decides to go back to the store. When he gets there, he finds a creature that looks like a little ball called Mize. To our surprise, this creature speaks. She reveals to Sato that Mia is actually being targeted by a wizard. The Mize ball explains that Mia actually has great magical abilities, and she is always being persecuted because of these skills. The conversation is soon interrupted when, suddenly, Sato hears thunder. He runs into the room to see what happened, and he ends up laughing when he sees that everyone was afraid of thunder there. However, it is at that moment that Tama notices an owl looking at them, and it was the same owl that chased Lulu and Sato in the forest. But, unfortunately, when Sato recognized the owl, it was already too late. At that moment, the owl transforms into the king of the living dead, called Zen, and he's there because he wants to take Mia with him at any cost. Sato placed himself in front of the monster so that it wouldn't touch Mia. He tried to resolve things in conversation, but to no avail. Soon he and Lisa start fighting Zen, and he was strong enough to get Mia to escape. This is the first time that Sato has been defeated in any way. Sato tried to run after Zen, but he ended up getting trapped in a dark dimension. Apparently, he activated his trap card. After Sato manages to escape the shadow dimension, he now finds himself in front of a gigantic tree. Walking there, Sato finds a girl whose body is covered in leaves. This leaf girl, despite not looking like much, has the incredible power to open doors there. Soon Sato understands that he is trapped in a tower system. Basically, for him to get out of there, he will have to defeat several creatures and level up. To find Zen, he will have to go up to floor number 200. It is said that 
that if he reaches this floor, he will be able to find Zen and will also receive the sacred sword as a reward. Remember that legend of the hero's sword that Zena told him about? Therefore, Sato begins to conquer the floors. Upon reaching the hundredth floor, Sato encounters many homunculi that take the form of human girls. However, he manages to find a way around this situation. After that, he also fought a giant iron golem created by Zen. But Sato had no difficulty defeating him either. Finally, when he arrives on floor number 200, he confronts Zen. Zen then says he will give him the sword if he defeats his entire army. If he can do this, he will take the sword and also Mia. Therefore, the cowardly Zen took Mia and went somewhere else while he let his Zen army start attacking Sato. But, as happened before, Sato fought against all of them and guess what, he easily defeated that army. I confess that I'm very happy when I see the protagonist like that, without messing around, crushing everyone. But anyway, back to the anime, Sato then confronts Zen once again. This time, Zen applauds him for getting this far. As promised, Zen gave Sato the magic sword and told him his entire tragic life. Soon discovered that Zen was also reincarnated in that game. As soon as he arrived, he was betrayed by those he trusted most. Later, Zen begs Sato to finish him off so he can at least be reunited with his wife when he leaves. At that moment, Sato ended Zen. After that, he won the trophy for being an immortal hunter king. After Zen's defeat, everything there begins to be destroyed. So, Sato rescues Mia, Idriad, and all the homunkos by getting them out of there. All decide to stay with Sato. However, he no longer wants to deal with so many girls at the same time. Poor him. What problem does Sato have, right? But in the end, Sato selects a girl for him and she calls her Nana. Sato then later reunites with Zen at the end and gives her the earrings he had bought for her. Sato then began a new journey to take Mia back to where she belonged. And meanwhile, Sato's interest in that king and his desire to learn more about magic were growing. He is improving his magical skills so he can level up. The trip with Mia was very pleasant and interesting. Sato also had a memory involving the shrine near his grandfather's house. After a long and tiring journey, Mia is finally reunited with her family. Therefore, the Rat Knight finally welcomes everyone with enthusiasm. He expresses his gratitude to Sato for taking care of Mia. Sato takes the opportunity to investigate the spells along the journey and asks Mia to take the test. After all, she was very skilled in magic. The girl agreed to do this and she activated a bubble washing spell and cleaned everyone there. Sato, meanwhile, continued acquiring new titles and conducting new experiments. But later, everyone slept comfortably. The next day, Sato went to an alchemy store to buy an elixir for some potions. But, as soon as he entered the store, he was attracted by the magic scroll. Unfortunately, someone bought all the magic scrolls in the store before him. So now he must make a direct purchase. Therefore, Sato disguises himself that night and buys the scrolls at the same store. It is important to say that Sato's obsession with these magical scrolls was motivated exclusively by his desire to develop his own skills. As Sato was very curious to discover the secrets on the other side of the forest, he crosses the barrier and is soon attacked by soldiers. He then meets a witch who asked Sato to come to her house. Only finding this request even a little strange, he accompanies her. She then teaches Sato a recipe to make a magic potion on condition that he delivers a letter to the city leader named Barkins. Sato returned to his house and was scolded by Arisa for arriving so late. After all, apparently he has no servants. He has several wives. The next morning, Sato sees the witch's apprentice being chased by a group of bandits. Immediately, he runs to try to help her. Currently, there are only 120 bottles of the potion left. After two mysterious people destroyed the cart carrying the potion bottles. This Barkins guy is a cruel man who demanded 300 bottles as agreed. Sato then takes responsibility for making the missing bottles as per the agreement. Therefore, he asks Liza, Tama, Postilo, Lu, and Nana to help him make these bottles, while he ordered Mia and Arisa to help the other girls with the other tasks. To advance production, Sato first does some studies to dry the bottles immediately. He then tries to make a healing potion based on the knowledge the witch had told him. Since Sato was good at absolutely anything, he managed to complete the 300 bottles of potion before sunset. However, things are just beginning. The bandits attack once again and destroy everything again. But Sato already knew something like this would happen. So, he hid the potions before the bandits could destroy them. Sato once again visited Barkin's office, and he ordered Sato to leave the city immediately, because he could never fulfill the order to provide the 300 vials of healing potion. However, this man does not know who he is talking to. Soon Sato rubs it in his face and says he managed to make all the potions before sunset. Even after seeing that, Barkins doesn't believe it and refuses to sign the delivery note. It was at that moment that Count Carano entered the office and said, I'll sign it for you. That, s because the witch exposed Barkins' terrible deeds. This caused Count Carano to dismiss Barkins. He obviously became furious upon hearing this and attacked Carano. Both were fighting fiercely until Saturday came in and stopped Carano from finishing Barkins. So, trying to resolve the situation in the best way, Sato proposes that Barkins be arrested instead of losing his life. After taking control of the situation and making everyone happy, Sato writes a letter to Zena in which he details everything that had happened throughout his travels. At this moment, Sato and his team continue their journey. For now, the video ends here. In the meantime, we are waiting for a new season of this incredible anime. I hope you enjoyed the video and leave a like. If you are not yet subscribed to the channel, subscribe and it will help me a lot. In exchange for your subscription,
description, I promise to introduce you to lots of incredible anime, agreed? Now the video is coming to an end. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video.